music is almost like looking into a mirror for a city or a culture and it's kind of like um, just this sort of reflection of where people's heads are at. You'll find that a lot of people playing music that you meet in Melbourne have come from country and migrated to the bright lights because arts culture or alternative culture doesn't really exist outside of the big cities and it's the same all over the world. It's definitely the negative ions that like charge the creative energy and the vibe of the city. Melbourne has long been the cultural capital of Australia with its healthy underground music scene, its accessible venues and a population keen to embrace new ideas. It's Melbourne Music Week, an initiative started by Melbourne City Council five years ago to showcase local talent and bring music to all parts of the city. During Melbourne Music Week we're really trying to uh, use different spaces. We uh, have access to different locations that we set up as a temporary uh, venue. And not all of Melbourne is coming along for the ride with one laneway party moved just days before it was set to commence due to the threat of noise complaints. A healthy live music culture and the changing face of a growing city are on a collision course. I think there's always a threat from corporate interests and from, from development interests that don't always see the real deep energy that music brings to a city. On any given Saturday night you've got about 100,000 people uh, visiting a live music event uh, and that's about 40,000 people in the CBD. So this is a huge industry. You've got music everywhere you go and it's a real strength and so I think the government's job is to embrace that. For Nozu, live performance is a really big part of what we do. In Melbourne we have those opportunities, there's like always a lot of good parties going on. A lot of good crews that we're associated with to play with really interesting people. I think maybe in some ways we're a, a city that doesn't have the immediate distraction of like an amazing surf beach that, that you can just sort of walk out of your front door and lose a few hours on. We've sort of got to find other things to do with our time. Melbourne's always searching for new sounds because the thing is punk rock had become its own, its own genre. The real punks, I guess, were pushing against that. That's why we started using electronics to try and, you know, force the issue. There's people from all cultures coming together and experiencing the music scene here. And, and so because you get so many inputs from so many different people and cultures, it just makes it much more exciting. <laughs> I grew up in the suburbs of Melbourne and spent our formative years going to infinite amounts of gigs, of which there are many, and that, that definitely shapes what you end up creating. Seeing stuff locally and then watching it sort of take off internationally is a beautiful thing and it's happening constantly, you know, it's like little jet planes leaving the tarmac. Like a lot of Australian bands, there is a unique kind of perspective that you have living in Australia that um, informs your music and does set you aside from music from other parts of the world.